Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can I make an honest confession? My wife was supposed to preach today. And, and she's making up her mind to change it. And, and I, I, gone, I went to the kitchen. And I'm standing at the kitchen sink and I'm saying, God, I don't want to preach. I said, God, I, I, I don't want to go on the altar on Sunday. I said, God, I don't want to go. And the more that I prayed, I don't want to go is the more that I have to go. <laughs> and Pastor Savvy and my wife are on the phone, and then he says, Brother Mike, I see you in a dream putting on new shoes. And I, I said, I'm okay. You know, sometimes when God is speaking, you could just say, okay. And it's all right to say, okay. It's all right to say, later. It's all right to say, see you then. It's all right to do that. So I stood up in the kitchen. I still did. Whenever I finish study, I love to go in the kitchen. And the more that I try to wash the plates, I can't wash the plates. I said, God, okay, we are going to speak. But yes, God, what are we going to talk about? And he said, sundry. And I said, but I spoke about this some time ago, but I can't remember, but I think I did. But he says, sundry. Sundry, hold on quiet, I'll make you to sit this. Sundry is only mentioned once in the Bible. You can see various forms, but it's only once in the Bible. And I love when God gives you something that is only one time. Because one signifies one God. One Trinity, one Holy Spirit, one baptism, one faith, one miracle. And the word one comes from the Hebrew word ekad. It means one. And the only time it is used in the natural is when people get married. They become one. That one is tough. But he still said they become one. So I'm going to speak. And we're going to see something from the word of God. And maybe here. Or maybe anywhere. When God begins to speak. You listen. And it's okay to be disobedient. Sometimes you think if you're disobedient, that God will leave you on the side. Your disobedience will still turn you to what God has you to do. So quiet, you can make you have your seat. Thank you. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. And I read only two verses. The message titled Sundry. S-U-N-D-R-Y. Now, I usually love the trivia. So I love the children always. I have a little challenge for them. So if I have the word sundry, I have what kind of word? 
How many words do I have there? You sure? How do I spell sun? S-U-N. How do I spell dry? So I have what? Two words. So when God sends the sun on you, and then he begins to dry you up, then it means that it is time to do his will. Sundry. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Verse 2. Hath in these last days spoken unto who? Us by his son. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds or the ages that spring. Father, let your word, O God Almighty, as you declare it, be a lamp unto our feet, a guide unto our path. God, as it is spoken, you will use it mightily to fulfill your glory and your honor. Save those who need to be saved. Heal those who need to be healed. Deliver those who need to be delivered. In the name of Jesus, let your word, O God Almighty, pierce the soul, the marrow, the bone, the sinews, the all, O God Almighty, for your glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When light was created, it did not begin like what it is today. It started somewhere. Somebody came with an idea later on to create light. But not only did they create light, they had to create light in such a way whereby it could remain permanent like how it is today. So it wasn't just only created. Now I will not go into the history for the sake of the people whom has created light and it is responsible for light. Back in the days we had phones and they were attached to a line. You had the cable. I don't think that we're too far away that we don't remember. But we had the line. And because I often had to take my rest because when you're in politics you never get a rest. So I would go to the line and plug it out of the wall and that's the only way it would not ring so I would rest and even if the people called me outside I would still rest so the history of the phone came from that line to now you can walk with it you can talk to it you can sing to it and just imagine the many things you can do out of the phone. For sundry, it is a time of place, time, circumstance, or reason. In other words, when God wants to do something, he needs a place to do it. He needs a particular time to do it. He needs a particular circumstance to do it. Or he needs reasons to do it. Walk in the street, here is a man who is intoxicated. And he is sitting at the front of a church. Not this one, but a church. And he stopped and he said, sir, can I tell you something? Well, I don't mind that he is drunk or intoxicated or under the influence of alcohol because I know very well what that is. And I stopped and he began to speak. For a moment, I did not understand clearly what he was talking about. But he was talking about something. He said he had a dream of the judgment of God 
come in upon the land. And now you can begin to think as I'm thinking. Because he's under the influence of alcohol and he tells me he has a dream of God about to judge the nation. And he says, I went to several people whom I know that's in the church and I told them so. But they never listened. But of course, yes, you understand why they would not listen. He said, the dream was so scary that I got scared. So he's now sitting in front of the church because the dream is scary. So even the drunk man, when he sees such type of dream, he finds himself in front of the church. The alcohol didn't stop him from finding the church. Because the dream was scary. Which means that God has a particular place, a particular time, a particular reason or circumstance by which God is going to speak. And sometimes God does not deliver everything, but he gives it into portions. You never eat or you never consume all the foods at your house in one time. You go into portions. And you leave the rest. Genesis chapter 2 says, and given the account of Adam, Adam is created by whom? By God. And since Adam is formed out of the dust, it means that Adam doesn't have parents. Huh? So there is no mother or father or both to teach Adam how to speak. But he needs speech. So God at a particular time says, let me make man. And I am going to place him in the garden. And at one time, God decides, okay, man is not needed to be alone, so he needs a helpmeet. So he creates a woman, causes man to sleep, and then he makes a perfect surgery, and he creates the woman. The Bible says that he brought the woman to Adam. And Adam immediately began to speak. Which means that his speech did not come from any other human being, but from God. So God gave him the precise speech that he needed for that particular time. In Genesis chapter 15, we find Abram. Later going to be Abraham. And God needs him to believe what God wants to do. But when God tells you to look at the stars of the heaven and you know that you can't count it, then of course, yes, it's going to be impossible. Because you can't count it. Then God makes the impossibility even more impossible. He says to look at the sand of the seashore can you number it i love when god places us in the impossible because in the impossible we can't do anything by ourselves but we must depend on god one of my friends he says to me my brother i am always encouraged when i see you because People like me have my feet, but I don't know how you make it with this one leg. 
My dependence is on who? On God. Even if it is injured, my dependence is still on God. The one who created it. Exodus chapter 15 talks about Moses. I'm giving you a, an account of people and how God spoke to them. In Exodus chapter, chapter 3, Moses encounters God. But he does not know his God. So what he sees is the burning bush. Now, you know, sometimes... Sometimes, when you read this particular text, you suppose that you might do better than Moses. But consider this. The bush is on fire. And it's not burning. Those of us who is to light fire, I, I used to love to light fire. But when the fire gets close to a house and you begin to take the bucket to try to get the fire out, oh my goodness, you could begin to think that the belt or the tamarind whip is going to come on your back and you better believe it is going to come. And those days, children, those days we used to get several beating, which means if your grandmother caught you, you get a beating. Then you go to your mother. And she gives you another one. Then she sends you to bathe and she gives you the supper one. And then she tells you, go to bed. Today we can hit you and still give you dinner, right? But he sees the burning bush. And it does not. And God says to Moses, stand Moses and remove your shoes because the ground on which you're standing is holy ground. That's why when the people used to beat the benches, I didn't know why they were beating the benches. I didn't know why they were saying, we are standing. On holy ground. I didn't understand that because I had not experienced the burning bush. But Moses did. And he stands there and God begins to speak from the fire of the burning bush. So in that particular place, the burning bush. In that particular time and in that particular circumstance, God is speaking to Moses through the burning bush. Is it possible that God is speaking or can speak to you through the burning bush? And I'm not talking about place your hand on the stove and start for it to burn and says, God, deliver me from burning my hands on the stove. When God speaks. Joshua chapter 1 talks about Joshua. God says, my servant Moses is dead. Now, you know, you think that there are only comedians in the world. You think, oh, well, we have Mama X who is, is brilliant for that. But you think it's only that you have. But God is amazing. Joshua is out from the presence of Moses. And God comes to Joshua and says, Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. He says, my servant is dead. Therefore, arise for you to take the children of Israel over. Isn't this amazing? That God can speak and tell you, get ready because my servant whom I had, I have taken him 
Oh, I have taken her. Oh, I have taken them. Get ready. Gideon chapter 6. Gideon says, I am not brave enough. Sometimes you may think that you're weak. You know, back in the days, they used to say, the woman is the weaker vessel. You, you heard that before. But I'm not going to go into that, but that's not, the, that's not what the scripture means. But sometimes you think that you are weak and you can't get it done. You think that fear overcomes you to the point whereby you can't get it. But God is seen within Gideon and he says inside of you is a mighty man of power. Can you imagine that God looks at you down on the wheelchair and he says you are mighty. And then he says God no I am 70 years old. Well Moses is dying at 120. So if you're 70, you still got 50 more to go. Eh? Who doesn't want to live 100 or 120? I want to live two. I don't know about you, but I want two. So usually when I hear the people say the rapture is coming, I say, God, I'm not going to be able to live my 200. But I don't control that time. But Gideon says, no God, I am weak. So I can't do it. I can't go and fight. I have never been trained to fight. You know, sometimes you have your Bible and you open the Bible and you say, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. And you say, this is the only thing that you know. Do you know that this was the only text that I know and I went out to evangelize every week? And the people used to tell me, where did you come from? You were just born. We saw you born. We saw your mother give you birth. You're a little boy. But I did not care. Because there was just something in me that says go to the highway. And sit there and just say John 3.16. Now even if I did not understand John 3.16, I just said it. The people get angry. I still didn't care, and I don't know why I didn't care. But that's all I knew. But I spoke it. And later on, taught very well, then I began to speak more. They hated, I did, still didn't care. Today, they hate, I still don't care. When am I going to care? Never. If you want to throw stones at me, you know, you could throw it. Because the song says... Sticks and stones weren't ever take my place. Sticks and stones won't ever take my place. So no, and I will worship you, God, with all that I do. So that no sticks and stones won't ever take my place. Don't get too wild. I'm not going to sing a lot. Joseph in Genesis chapter 37 has a dream that his brothers are going to be underneath him. You know, if you have a dream that somebody is going to be underneath you, that's okay. If you have a dream that somebody is going to be above you, that's okay. Now, I know sometimes, for those of you who know me very well, I don't have a problem with that. Because when I come to your house, the only place I go is your kitchen. And everybody, whether you're below me, whether you're above me, whether you're in the side, wherever you are, I don't care. I go to the kitchen. And I begin to smell from outside. So whatever position that you hold, I don't really worry. I go to the I don't want nothing else but the kitchen. If the sink is leaking, I will take care of that. If it has dirty plates, I will take care of that. The couch, you could do that.
but the kitchen. Now I get into the heart of things. In Isaiah chapter 1, God says to Isaiah, I need you to come and that we can reason together. Sometimes God needs you to come. God needs you at a particular place. God needs you at a particular time. God needs you for a particular reason. God needs you for a particular circumstance. Will you give that to him? I have divided my 24 hours. And I says, God, I need to spend five to six hours a day with you. But then later on, I had to surrender a little. My wife says to me, Mike, every day you're studying. Every living day you're studying. Even when I am off, you're studying. I am there sitting and you're studying. I am cooking in the kitchen, you're studying. I am sleeping, you're studying. You are always studying. I say, God, I've got a problem. And he says, put down the book. And then I get a migraine. Because now I have to put down the book. So sometimes, even if you set the time aside for God, sometimes somebody else needs it. So at a particular place, at a particular time, in a particular circumstance or a reason, God needs you. We're not in this place by accident. And we will never be in any place by accident. Usually people say you are at the right place at the right time to do the right thing. No, I'm always at the right place. But sometimes I got to control my appetite because being at the right place, I might be deceived. So he says to Isaiah, come and let us reason. Can God in sundry time call you to reason with him? Because he says, the orphans that you're seeing, they need somebody to go to. Somebody has to go to the, to the orphans. Sometimes we can be afraid to tell the government, listen, even if the people are leaving their country, go to the border and be an orphan. And you will know what it's like to move away from a place where you have no food. So what do I do with the little child who is crossing with a mother? I said, child, the Lord says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe, whosoever he says, 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 whosoever says, whosoever. So I don't care if the mother gets drunk. The child is an orphan. So he says to Isaiah, come because I've got some social issues to deal with. You know, the social workers, when they study, they think that they are very smart. There was a year that I was in Brooklyn and the people who were social workers and psychologists and psychiatrists and, and all of these social and this social sciences thought that they were so smart. I love when people come from university and demonstrate that they're so smart. Because I always want to tear them down. And I says, God says, and they're in the church too. So you know, well, you don't know me yet. I don't speak much in this church because I'm afraid that they will put me out. But when I go out to different churches and then they start, 
oh my God in heaven, I am on fire. And I says, men and brethren, do you know that the scripture says that God told Isaiah, come let us reason together. Do you know that your social science study is after the world? And do you know that you're taking it inside the house of God, supposing that God doesn't have an answer? And they looked at me, and they begin to fight back. Now, when you fight back, oh my God, it's like you set me on fire. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. And I studied on them. And when I finished, my friends, they called me and they said, we never knew you were like that. I said, yeah. Because when you go contrary to the word and you bring the world into the church, you set me on fire. And I don't care. Because you can put me out. I can go at my home. And he says, there are times the people need justice. Which means we are judges. Oh my God, do you know that we're going to come back with Christ and we're going to judge the world? You don't need a degree. You don't need the world to approve you. Jesus has already. Daniel in the lion's den, just for praying. So I never understand when they said, we pray and God, he listens. We pray and God, what did he do? He stopped. If God that we serve can stop the sun, woo, if God can stop the sun, you know, sometimes I see myself on stage and the crutches drop. And I am walking on the stage as if it were I'm walking with my feet. But I'm not seeing the feet. Not the congregation seeing the feet. But they're seeing me walking normally. Because I prayed and he stopped for a while. And he says, son, do you really need the feet? I said, yes, God. But he says, I need you like this for some time now. And just for praying. Sometimes you can be praying and there are others seeking to put you in the lion's den. When my wife is praying, I chill. I just chill. Somebody say, why don't you join her? I just chill. I chill because while she's praying, I want to hear what God is telling me to do. So I just chill. Why? Because Yes, I may pray, but God may have something. So I chill. The house is quiet. There is no television. My phone is on vibrate. She makes noise of me of that. The phone being too much on vibrate. Put it to ring. Sometimes it goes on silent by itself. I don't know how it get there. Yesterday I heard it ringing. I don't, I don't know how it get to ringing. But I leave it on vibrate because I want to hear something. And he prayed and he prayed and he prayed. And the men saw him praying. And they came and they said, King, we saw this man praying. Which is against what you uttered. Years ago we prayed in school. From the moment you get to school, you join a line. And as you join the line, everybody says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Do you know that I was praying this prayer downstairs in the basement of the Sunday school children? And one little boy, I think his name is Caleb, he came up to me and he says, do you know that we don't say, forgive us our trespasses, but forgive us as debtors? And I looked at this little boy, and I remember just standing in class and in the line praying. So which means somebody taught this boy to pray the Lord's Prayer. Because he could immediately tell the difference between forgive us our trespasses and placing debtors. So he knew exactly where debts and debtors were. Do you know? Somebody taught him well. Paul on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9. He is fuming because he is going to kill the Christians. Do you know that there are people always seeking to kill you? But maybe it hasn't started here yet because they don't want the gospel. But he is breathing threatenings because the Christians are disrupting everything that is happening. You know, sometimes I ask myself, when the people raise a banner, why don't we raise a banner? Is it the Jehovah Shalom? Isn't he? So, if I raise my banner, what's going to happen? I said to my wife, I need a yellow shirt because I'm going to sit at the corner of 240F and White Plains Road and I'm going to sit on a chair. She says, no, don't buy this shirt. It's not joining. But I raised my banner. So we sing, raise the banner. But you don't want to raise it. Now let's go. John chapter 1 says Jesus came in the flesh. So he is the incarnation of God. He is in the flesh. Now whether somebody wants to hear that Jesus came in the flesh and he is God and he has the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter because we believe. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We sing it, don't we? So when it's time to confess it, then therefore confess it. So now, let me wrap up. The word sundry, it means by many portions. So you can imagine every one of us sitting here, we have a portion. Huh? That God has given us a portion. Whether it is singing, whether it's encouraging, whether it's sharing a track, whatever it is, God has given a portion. 
What is your portion today? What are you doing with your portion? Is your portion being able to transform somebody? What are you doing with the portion that God has given unto you? Every portion needs a time. Maybe it's not your time to deliver your portion. But there is a portion that God has given unto every man. Sometimes many think I should be doing many things. But no, I want to be in my portion. And I know my portion. And God in this many portions, in this many times, has many ways of doing it. If I want to know how many times I could arrange these chairs, all I have to do is just to number the chairs and begin to subtract one each time and multiply them. And I can know how many ways I could arrange these chairs in this building. Which means that God has many ways to arrange your chair. So what are you? I want to leave us with five things. The first one is God needs a messenger or an agent. Are you that agent today? Are you that messenger today? When God needed to speak to the seven churches in Revelation, he did not go to them directly. It keeps saying, and the angel of the Lord spoke to the church at Ephesus. And the angel of the Lord spoke to the church at Theatira. And the angel of the Lord spoke to the church at Philadelphia. And it goes on to mention the seven churches. God needed a messenger. The second thing is, God has a message. God always wants to bring a message. You know, when the male people come at your house, sometimes I stop for a little time and I say, how many addresses do you know? And they laugh. So I would usually provoke them and say, so if somebody commits a crime and they're looking for a particular person, you're the best person to find. And then they'll just laugh. And I understand why they laugh, because they can't tell me anything more. But you can imagine how many addresses that they know. When you go to the supermarket and you ask anyone in the supermarket who has been working there, what aisle do you have the salt? Aisle 12. Huh? And you wonder how do they know their product and what aisle? They know their message. And they speak their message. The third thing is, God has a specific time to bring the message. Don't kill yourself trying to bring a message that God doesn't want you to bring. You don't have to. Why do you worry? Why do you panic? Why do you fret? Sometimes you think you should be doing more. But God has a specific time. It says when in the fullness of time, God sent his son. It wasn't when people were ready. It was when God was ready. So you don't worry. You just keep pressing. I'm pressing on the upward way. I know the, the older folks, you stop because you know what happens. Number four, God gives in portions. Do not try to eat everything. You know, if you eat everything, you might vomit. Huh? You ever experience that? So sometimes I got to control my appetite. Yesterday I'm telling my wife, how is it that my leg is very good? My arms are very good. 
My head is good. But my stomach, it's just not going down. <laughs> of course, yes, she's going to laugh. And I said, oh my goodness, I must control my appetite. But for those of us, that, for those of you who are married, if your wife cooks good, you better be careful because sometimes people might not recognize you. But um, I am still recognized at least. And then she gets me the shirt to cover it up, right? So I am blessed. I am blessed, right? She makes sure that she covers the default. Thank God. Number five, God has many ways to carry out his message. You know, don't, you, know you could just drive on the Bronx River alone, right? But he may want you somewhere else. So you pass the different street. Whenever my wife and I are out, I say, look, look, could you just pass over here? She says, I never knew that there was some street. Well, then I did real estate, so you had to know every street. If you didn't know every street, the man at 6 o'clock would tell, 6 o'clock in the morning, tell you, go and find out and know all the streets. And the many ways can be in visions. The many ways can be in dreams. The many ways could be in the burning bush. The many ways can be speaking. How is God relating his message to you? today I know it is Sunday and I know it is sundry times and I know that the sun is hot and I know it can dry your clothes but God in that particular time in the particular sundry time God has a message that he needs to give an agent and who is the messenger it's very simple. Sometimes I just say, I am blessed. And they just keep repeating. The more that they see me, is the more that they repeat what I say. And I say, oh my goodness, I wish if I could have cloned myself. Like Dali the sheep. No, no, not, not Sister Dali. But that's all I say. I am blessed. How are you? I am blessed. How are you? I am blessed. But you know, sometimes you could say, I'm fine. Well, if you're fine, then it means that you need a strainer. You know, when your flower gets infested, you need a strainer to sift it. But no, you're not fine. You're blessed. You're a child of God. You're a child of the King. You're not any ordinary person. Can you imagine that we came from different parents and we could sit in the same room? Can you imagine? Can you imagine our complexion is different? But may I tell you that even if our complexion is different, you could still invite me to your house. And don't worry, it's very inexpensive. You don't have to spend a lot. You don't have to put good couches. You don't have to spread no sheet on the bed because I'm not interested. You know what I'm interested in. We can steal. My sister came to the loud conference and I said, my sister, you know they have in the shirts, a t-shirt they have. You have to have that t-shirt. So I said, here, take my t-shirt. Take it, take it, go to the bathroom, change your clothes and put it on. She's right. And she takes the t-shirt and she goes to the bathroom and she changes and she came out and I said, oh my goodness, she looks good. But then they asked me, where is your t-shirt, Minister George? I said, oh, oh, I gave it out. Well, because I'm not a lady in the loud conference, right? So therefore, I gave out the loud. I shared the loud. That my sister could look good. And oh my goodness she looked good. 
Now to all the ladies, yeah, you look good, but I'm not going to tell you that. I'm very careful. Men, do not do that. But the point is God has a message for every single person in a particular location, at a particular time, and a particular circumstance, or a particular reason. All you do is you spend time with God. And God will tell you what it is. And when he tells you what it is, you go. And sometimes you could doubt and sometimes you could not want to go like me sometimes. But you still go. Because God has this message that he needs an agent or a messenger. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Go in his name. His word is good. His name is. So now, if you don't know the message. And if you don't know the many ways that the message can be carried out, or you may fear that the message will not be received, that the message will be rejected. I was rejected, but I never stopped. I still kept going. So we're going to pray. And it's if it's impressed on your heart to come to the altar, you come. Can I have the, the musicians and, the, and the, some of the choir people? Because there are times 